let's go ahead and take a look at the dictionary definition of a variable. A variable, also called a scalar, is a storage address paired with an associated symbolic name which contains a known or unknown quantity of information. To better understand what a variable is, we need to first learn life cycles. So what is memory life cycle? Basically, a memory life cycle is the time between an object's creation and its destruction. No matter the programming language, memory life cycles are the same. You first allocate memory, then you use memory, lastly you release that memory so you can allocate new memory. The first step is allocating memory. Memory is allocated by the operating system, which allows your program to use it. All computers have memory, also known as RAM. It's also referred to as random access memory. Memory can be thought of as an array of bytes. Let's go ahead and take a visual look at this. As you can see here on one side we have address memory location and the other values. This is what it looks like more or less. You have addresses on one side and a value associated to the address on the other. After the operating system has allocated memory to the application, you can start using it. Read and write operations are happening as you are using the allocated memory, such as assigning and changing variable values in your script. Lastly, when you are done using the memory, the operating system will release the memory. When variables are no longer in use, you can release the entire memory so that it is freed and can be used to allocate new memory. This can be done manually or automatically depending on the programming language you are using. One thing to keep in mind is that the operating system only determines how much memory is allocated to your application. However, your application's programming language determines how memory is handled. One tip I have for you on memory usage is that the less memory you use, the better it is in general. For games, using less memory takes into consideration the performance for users who are using lower size RAMs and CPUs in their computers. One thing to note is that if there is enough space, the operating system will allocate more memory from RAM to your application if your application uses more than the allocated memory that was previously assigned to it by the operating system. If you go over the RAM limit, the operating system will start allocating memory to your application from the hard drive or solid state drive. One thing to note is that using hard drive or solid state drive for memory is slower than using RAM. Let's take a look at the basic variable process. We have a variable x which equals the literal integer 2020. First, the application will allocate enough memory for the variable. In this case, enough memory to hold an integer. Second, the application will assign the value 2020 to that memory address location. Third, the application will indicate to the variable x that it needs to point to that value. Lastly, depending on the language, memory is freed when not in use. Let's go ahead and see this visually with the C language. We have an integer x which equals the literal integer value 2020. As you can see here, we have our integer x, which has been assigned a memory address location, and it has also been assigned its value 2020. So basically the memory address location has the value of 2020. Let's go ahead and create a second integer y, which will equal x. As you can see here, x still has the same location and the same value. However, the application has created a new location memory address for y. However, it's still assigned the same value as x. Keep in mind that the application has created different location addresses for x and y. However, the values are the same for x and y. Let's go ahead and modify the value of y. As you can see here, we have now assigned the literal integer 0 to the integer y. Notice here that the location for y remains unchanged. However, the value has now been modified to 0. You can change the value of y or the value of x as many times as you want. You will never change location address in memory for either of these values. The way the C language handles memory is a good thing as it decouples the memory address of x and y, meaning that you can change the values of x without changing the values of y, and you can change the values of y without changing the value of x. This is possible because both x and y are pointing to two different memory address locations in the application. Now that we have a basic understanding of how the C language handles memory, let's go ahead and take a look at Godot uses reference counting. 
What this means is that instead of using garbage collection to remove from memory unused code, Godot uses reference counting to determine whether or not something should be removed from memory. Let's go ahead and take a look at how Godot handles the execution of this line of code. So we have a variable x which is equal to the literal integer 2020. What Godot does is it creates an object. Then it sets the type to integer. Next, it sets the value to 2020. Then it creates a name called x. It points x to the new object. And then it increases the object's reference count by one. As you can see here, the memory layout is different than the memory layout previously shown with the language C. Instead of x owning the block of memory where the value 2020 lives in, the newly created object owns the memory where 2020 lives. The name x doesn't own any of the memory address. Since Godot uses reference counting instead of garbage collection, what this means is that as long as the object has a reference count greater than zero, the object will continue to exist in memory. Let's go ahead and create a new variable y which will equal x. As you can see here, our application goes through the same process it went through to create the value of x. However, instead of creating a new object, what our application did, in this case what Godot did, is that it created the name y and it pointed it to the object that has the value 2020. Basically, it points the variable y to whatever x was pointing to. As you can see here, the object now increases its reference count by one. But what happens in memory when we assign a new integer value to y? Well, in this case, the application, or rather Godot, creates a new object with a new address memory to contain that new value. Then what it does is it takes the name of y and it points it to that object. So while x is still 2020, our y is now zero. Let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when we change the value of x. As you can see here, our application Godot creates a new object with a new memory address. It creates the type, it creates its value, it points x to this object, and it increases its reference count by one. As you can see here, x is pointed to this object, y is pointed to another object, but nothing is pointing to our previous object, which is 2020. As you can see here, the reference count is now zero. What this tells the application Godot to do is that it needs to release this object from memory. This is basically Godot's way of memory management. One tip I have for you is that nodes in Godot are not reference counted in the engine. What this means is that removing a node from the tree will not delete it. Many people will use remove child thinking it removes it from memory. However, this is not the case. To better manage nodes, create a pool of objects and reuse the node object. You can also explicitly destroy the node from memory by calling queue free in the exit tree, which is called when the node is removed from the tree.